support each other in this process. This is a really hard slot to predict, you know, because it's 2.25 on a Friday. And so um, we, we are very glad to be here with you. Um, and we understand that you've been waiting all day to do this. So thank you for your face. Um, I um, would like to uh, say before we start that um, I have a deep appreciation of the student's taste in music. And also <laughs> his tenacity. Um, Pedro, the amount of work that you've done on this paper and the patience and the maturity of showing the process has been the best. And I'm glad that I love you. I will never forget the chill that went down my spine. The day I heard my grandmother's horrified voice from my father's speaker phone. A man had been shut down eight times in my grandma's quiet residential building. The reason for this act was a dispute over a parking space. Hi, my name is Pedro Ramon Biaco. This year I researched access to firearms by the Omega population and its relation to crime. The title of my senior oral defense presentation is Best Weapon of Choice, Regulated Weapons in the Omega Republic. Out of 10 cases of violent deaths in the Dominican Republic, six were performed with guns. This makes firearms the main tool of unnatural death in the Dominican Republic. Those carrying firearms have been consistently found to participate in all sorts of vicious behavior including homicides, robberies, and all sorts of sh uh, shootouts. Shockingly, firearms are also used to solve interpersonal problems, including feuds, fights, which result in more deaths than planned crime itself. In the last eight years, firearms left 12,793 victims in the Dominican Republic, with an average of 133 victims per month. In 2012, it was reported that 1,600 people in all the Dominican Republic's national territory died due to injuries inflicted by firearms. 91.3% of these deaths were presented as homicides, while the small rest were suicides. It is important to note that non-natural deaths have incremented significantly in the last couple of years in the Dominican Republic with violent deaths standing out as being particularly violent. The combination of a population that has a tendency towards violence, plus an easy access to violence, is simply devastating. Clearly, homicides that take place in the Dominican Republic and the amount of guns available to the general public are correlated. It seems that as the number of guns increases, homicides in the country increase as well. The Dominican Republic's general attorney, Dr. Francisco Dominguez Rico, presented revealing evidence about the relationship between the homicides and firearms. When he stated that of 1,808 suicides in 2014, 62 percent, or 1,130, were committed with a gun. In Tahira Vargas Garcia's view, it has become hard to classify guns in the Dominican Republic as weapons of self-defense, their use generates more risk of becoming a victim or aggressor. As citizens who have decided to arm themselves cause in 65.49% of the cases, that is by a bullet wound. Besides homicides, another major consequence of the easy access of firearms to the Dominican Republic is the high amount of robberies per year, as the use of firearms facilitates robberies and other related crimes. Another major issue is that robbers target citizens who carry guns in the, with the intention of stealing them. The gun wielding citizens are often killed or injured by the robbers, who most of the times are carrying guns themselves. According to the declarations of the Dominican Republic's police, in 2011, there were 481 side and light weapons seized, for an average of over two weapons seized per day, and many of them were reported missing. Through my investigation, I have found that the number of firearms carried by the Dominican population 
is the main cause of all the unlawful behavior mentioned above. I am confident that the easy access to firearms by the American population, including the high number of guns that are already out there on the streets, combined with high rates of crime and the use of, of firearms to solve interpersonal feuds, has, con has contributed immensely to the increase in violence, casualties, and injuries in the past decade. This proliferation of guns, along with predominant factors in the Dominican Republic, such as poverty, corruption, inequality, impunity, and violent cultural patterns, make this scenario simply devastating. There is a shotgun, pistol, or revolver for every 50 inhabitants of the Dominican Republic, and that quantity only refers to legal guns. It is shocking to see how much the amount of legal guns has increased in the Dominican Republic's population, from 30,166 registered in 2000 to some 206,707 in 2011, a quantity that only refers to legal guns. In the past, certain efforts have been done to act against the, the widespread fire violence in the Dominican Republic. The most notorious and the one that caused the most impact was the one done by the country's former president, Leonel Fernandez, who passed a policy in 2006 prohibiting the importation of fires in the country as a whole. The policy drove the prices for firearms up and stopped companies in the country's private sector from making their own importations. But in the end, it failed on dropping the rates of fire violence and access. In fact, the 2006 importation ban on firearms propitiated the legal commerce of the same weapons, which greatly incremented the amount of guns in the Dominican population's possession. Dominican authorities have confiscated numerous illicit firearms increasingly after the 2006 ban often defining police and military personnel purchasing these illegal weapons in order to, to obtain, them, obtain them at cheaper prices. In order to considerably drop the virus violence in the Dominican Republic, I have come up with three solutions. The first solution for this problem would be for the Dominican Republic's government to set up a new agency whose sole task would be to implement enhanced regulation of, of issued firearms while ensuring closer supervision and control. From time to time, gun owners should be required to turn their guns into this agency in order to, to see if the guns are still in their possession or if they may lost or stolen. The second solution would be to make restrictions on the amount of guns available for the Dominican population to purchase for you reducing the number of guns in the hands of the population and therefore dropping the crime rates. This could be achieved by establishing purchasing seasons for the civilian population to buy guns. For example, the market for guns could be open for seven selected months in a year and would, be, and would remain closed for the other five. In the five months in which the fire market is closed, selected companies such as security companies would still be able to get their inventories. However, it would be extremely difficult for a civilian to purchase a gun during that season. As mentioned before, a certain culture exists in the Dominican Republic that makes guns attractive objects to a substantial part of the population. Despite this fact, there is not a lot of awareness about how much guns are truly affecting the country in a detrimental manner. New programs designed to educate citizens about the negative effects fires have on the population should be implemented on the country. The government should create a conscious in the Dominican Republic's population about the dangers related to this proliferation of drugs. Through newspapers, radio, television, and other media. Flyers and pamphlets should be distributed at educational centers, such as schools, universities, and cultural institutions. If we, implement, if we implement these three solutions of creating a government agency whose sole task and objective is to regulate and control violence, 
if we establish purchasing seasons for firearms, and if we create a conscience in the Dominican population of the negative effects of firearms through media, crime rates and deaths due to interpersonal confrontation would surely go. Thank you. There's no more importation of guns. It's, all yeah, it's completely missing. And so guns are created here. Sorry? So new guns are created here. Are they here? Um, before the ban, the number of, of guns was, was crazy. So many of those guns are still in stores. However, the 2006 ban had as an, as an objective to deeply um, reduce the number of guns, and with no more guns coming in, they would eventually run out. However, the problem with this is that um, a big part of the population from all different sectors have found ways to bring um, illicit firearms from Haiti and other parts of the country. And what is really shocking is that it's not just um, criminals who are in this gun trafficking. There are many members of the police, uh, a big number of private companies who are in security, who get better guns at a cheaper price if they bring them in a, in an illicit way. So the 2006 ban was, um, was a failure. Nico asked a question earlier in Daniel Lopez's presentation about the police as a terrorist organization. And I wondered if you could speak to the relationship. You talked about gun violence. Did your research show anything about violence against citizens on the part of law enforcement, uh, against law enforcement on the part of citizens? Um, after a homicide due to quarrels and and feuds and confrontations of the street. Before crime uh, coming from robberies, assaults, before that in the middle was that um, which um, had something to do with with the fights with the police. Either the police force killing the criminals or members of the, of, of the police shut down on the streets. In most cases, to get a hold of their service weapons. So it's a, it's a big part of this whole, um, this whole issue. So some countries, for example, in Great Britain, um, the sectors of the police that protect the government offices are armed. But the, uh, the the policemen who are on the beat on the streets are unarmed. Would a policy like that be workable or viable in a country like the Dominican Republic? It's a it's a very good point. Um, I think that if if these police officers were unarmed, they would um, they would be they would cost a lot less attention to the robbers and other criminals, but it's it's such a violent country that if the police officers were to have their guns taken away, they would be completely unable to to make any sort of enforcement. Um, violent enforcement. Enforcement because I don't think um, an armed person who's committing a crime would pay much attention. They would be the police officer chasing him with, with I don't know, a, a nightclub would be completely harmless. It would seem irrelevant to the criminal. Yeah. So it's, it goes both ways. 
I'm guessing that poverty plays a part in this, and I wonder if your research uh, looked into the effects of poverty in terms of the whole uh, culture of criminality. Um, guns in the in the poor population are symbols of respect, of certain power. Um, I, I came up that children um, growing up in this poor uh, hood, hoods would, would look up to the guy with the gun. So it's not just um, that they carry these guns for, that people carry these guns if they intend to rob somebody, but uh, a huge part of this whole issue is um, problems on the street, on a, on a bar. At the beginning of my presentation, I talked about a confrontation over a parking space that that resulted in a man getting shot in times. So it's it's more than just uh, an object for criminals. It's I think it's sort of built into our culture, special especially into those kids who, who are more poor. As a follow-up, do you think that's there's a gender basis for that? There's that's another um, almost no victims or aggressors of the of this whole issue were women. It was something I think I, I, I don't remember the percentage, but it's 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 mostly with male from the ages nineteen through thirty, which this whole issue is like it's it's so important to get um, a gun and just have it in case something happens if someone were to harm your family. If so, I think this whole mentality is the true, the true issue. So that being the case, one of your solutions was to educate the populace about the true danger of firearms. So if the problem population is young males, nineteen to thirty, between nineteen and thirty, um, especially those from lower socioeconomic classes, what specific messages we need to be sending. How would we send those messages and what tone should the messages take? Um regarding the tone, I wouldn't I think it would be uh, it couldn't be a, an imposed tone because part of the culture is many poor people they don't they don't get any source of power their lives, maybe their jobs or in their everyday life. So they they really feel um they really like the feeling of having a gun, of having power over over other people. And they, I, I, I think that is one of the major issues. So I think as I said in my presentation that this media should be should be targeted at schools. At universities and a work well, uh, the formation of the of the students, their ages is still you can still talk them. In, in, they might still listen to you. So there, you, you you made it sound as if what's driving it is the need to protect your families and protect your investment. So you're saying before people make those investments in yeah. family and yeah, as I there's a oh, as I represented too. There's a a percentage that says that Citizens who have decided to arm themselves are the ones that cause, in 65.33% of the cases, deaths due to these interpersonal problems. So, 
it's it's basically this idea of getting a gun to protect your family and to protect yourself against the crime that is making this issue really really broad and really yeah. and then what happens is people end up committing the crime with the gun rather than preventing the crime. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So we need to educate them about that thing. It's so they may they might also become victims. Um, a pro a, a street quarrel in uh, the danger of a street quarrel multiplies when members of the of the fight suddenly bring out a gun. One sees that a guy in a chosen gun, there is probably a member of the other group that also has a gun, and then they just start shooting. That was what happened in, in my first example. Um, a tutor went to a, a, res a residence to give tutoring to, a, to a, a girl, and there was no parking. So he went ahead and parked his car on on a, on a parking space that was not his. When the guy came up and saw that his parking space was taken, he was having a bit of a, of a, hard, a hard day, he was pissed. So he placed his vehicle like this, so the other guy couldn't come out. And then the, when the tutor uh, what, uh, was going to head home, he was like, sir, could you please move your car? And the man was just like, he didn't, he hadn't shown his gun, but he was sort of bullying him, like, um, why are you going inside your parking space? And he got, the tutor got pushed in a couple of times. So then the, the mother of the girl who was receiving the, the tutor, right, the tutor, called her brother. And he said, she said, hey, this guy, uh, this neighbor is a uh, roughing, roughing things up. Um, would you come over? And the, the brother arrived with a gun in his hand. And when the, the guy who was having the, the problem, the rough day, he saw that, he just pulled out his and shot him numerous times to the body. So that's an example that is sort of, it's, it's, That example is like the uh, it's it's like the essence. You see a guy pulling out another gun, you even you immediately reach yours and open fire. That's what happens numerous times. Of the country as a whole. Um it's a really hard a number to come up because um, no entity votes the true number of grounds uh, due to the illicit grounds that have been for an increase in the country. However, there were 30,156 legal registered guns in 2000, and in 2011, the, jump, the number had jumped up to 206,707, and that is the number that only accounts for, for legal weapons. Uh, I'm from the U.S. The U.S. has struggled with this problem. We've tried to um, manage uh, drug, or me, um, weaponry in the U.S. and I haven't had much success either. Um, some would point to the fact that there's a, a, an organization, the NRA, the National Life Association, that wants to protect everyone's life to own a gun, right? Uh, is there a similar uh, situation here? Is there a, a, a group that protects gun ownership within the DR? Definitely. Their private companies have been extremely pissed since the 2006 ban, and they have advocated um, the right of 
the population to arm themselves. They've done it more as a, uh, because that's their business. Yeah, but they put a, a lot of pressure um, on the government. Citizens, on the other part, um, they, they, they um, feel, they like their guns, they feel safe with their guns, and it wouldn't, and I think total disarmament wouldn't go well, um, especially with the, how easy it is to, to get an illegal weapon. Um, I think the main, the main difference between this country and the U.S. is that in this country you can get a, a pistol, a revolver, or a shotgun with, with relative facility in the legal aspect. But automatic weapons are completely legal, except if you're a member of the police or, the, or military. And I mean, I think that this this part of the law is extremely um, it's so not not helpful. It's if if automatic weapons would would be legal, it would be it probably increase humanity. So I think that's a uh, big difference between this country and the U.S. Mr. Ma, did you have a question? Well, I, I like about one of the solutions you are presenting about the, the schools. Because I think in the Dominican Republic it's very cultural. The, the power and it was, it's like the recycling the families, the, the bonds, you inherit the bonds, and it's like, a, as you said, a, our uh, thing to, to have guns, and I think it's a very good solution to, to speak in the schools about the violence and everything. And I see, you see, the newspapers that since the citizens feel unprotected by the government because the, it's, it's increasing the, the violence in the Dominican Republic, I see some neighborhoods that the neighbors say, okay, we, we are going to defend ourselves. What, what do you think about this? Um, that's a major cause. Um, I mentioned that citizens have had armed themselves due to, uh, to an increasing mistrust of, of, the, of the authorities. They will say, like, this, the police are um, bigger criminals than the criminals themselves. They're so corrupt. Let me get out of and defend myself. Um, this, these people won't help me. So I mentioned a new agency to be developed, which I think would reestablish some some confidence and respect into the the country's authorities. But at the same time, there would be the, those programs that I was talking about in the universities and schools that would get a balance between enforcement and enforcement and and teaching um, that I think would be really helpful for the population as a whole. Um, I think you said that uh, the Republic is a violent country. How does it compare to, uh, the United Kingdom compares to the other regions, islands, or something like that? Um, my research was mostly about the Dominican Republic. However, I found that compared to Haiti, which is our neighboring country, the gap is huge of the people shot here compared to Haiti, but the, the scope of my research didn't cover, cover other, other countries. Well, I, I see a mafia. Here. Or here. Yeah. Armed violence. Yeah. 